workout tour time. Let's go inside. It's a lot warmer than it is out here. What is happening, my friends? Welcome to another video here at Roadie Free Radio. I'm very happy to have you with me, and I thank you so much for tuning in. I have been putting off doing a studio tour video for like almost three years now. I don't know why, I just, you know. You know what it is? I'll tell you what it is. I think it's because I look at other people's videos about their studio tours, and I go through that classic thing where I'm like, my room doesn't look as cool as theirs. I mean, look at those people, Becky and Chris. Like, they've got it dialed in, man. Peter McKinnon, dialed in. I'm not gonna come close to that. But I had to do it, wanted to do it, wanted to show off what I had here and what the room is like and the vibe and everything because I talk about it enough and I've been saying I'm gonna do a studio tour, so today was the day. Had to get some shoveling out of the way and thought you guys would like a little, a little chance to see inside the inner sanctum. So we're gonna take a look around and see what we got. And um, yeah, I hope you dig it. Let's go. First up, we've got the chill lounge right here. This is where I hang out, I listen to records, got the record collection going right over there. And uh, nice little couch situation. I could sit here, ponder the next job or think about the next video that I'm gonna do. I don't think you can see it, but pretty much through that window, is our house where we live and then through this back window that's completely blown out and backlighting me is a little river that runs through here so it's very peaceful it's very nice i love hanging out in this little spot i've got my vinyl got my whole vinyl collection right here this was a record collection that belonged to my mom and my sister and me growing up and all that stuff gets played right over here on an old school turntable and stereo system right there so that's what happens there and on this wall i've got my my favorite picture of my late cousin the blues guitarist michael bloomfield that picture was taken by jim marshall famous concert photographer and rock photographer here's a little piece that was done on michael and rolling stone i like to keep up and then i've got one more picture right up there of michael and a few shots of my grandfather down here just to keep me keep me connected to family and all that good stuff. So that, that's the first spot. The second spot I wanted to show you guys is right here. This is where the editing takes place that I do for my client work, as well as the Electro Voice RE20 that I use to do the intros for my podcast. This is where I do the podcast from. I do the interviews right here. I record those on Skype. And then I have a piece of software called Ecamm Movie Tools, which if you haven't checked out, and you want to get into podcasting and you want to record those Skype calls, it is bulletproof. Maybe I'll do another video on the whole workflow at some point, I probably should, but. So this, this set, I used to use this as a place to do my intros from, and I had lights set up and everything, and I just decided to change it up, even though the background's kind of the same, but um, yeah, this is pretty much where everything happens right here. I plug everything into this Mackie 402 VLZ4. Now I've switched boards a couple times, but right now this is working for me. It's exactly what I need. I got a couple different channels in, a couple different things happening. So that's what's going on there. And then I also use the Focusrite 2i2 Scarlet that I've talked about many times. That's right there. That's the preamp that I use to do the show. The laptop pretty much is just for my editing stuff. And this is a Mac Mini. It's a Mac Mini that's hiding right there. That's pretty much where I do the podcast, as well as all my sort of administrative work that I have to do for my company. Then, of course, no studio would be complete without the guitars. So, right here, I've got all my guitars right behind me so I can grab them. This is one of my favorites right here. This is a, a parts caster, they called it. Pretty much took uh, I bought all the different parts that I wanted, put it in that guitar, put it all together, and that's my, my favorite, my number one telly. And then I've got the first acoustic that I bought when I was a singer-songwriter in LA. That's an Alvarez Jumbo. 
This is a 1968 or 69 Gibson ADJ acoustic guitar, super great guitar. And then just a couple of other random, my wife's Stratocasters over here and Epiphone Les Paul, just to get that, that Les Paul crunch. Here's my man, Bob Marley singing. Found that in Santa Fe, New Mexico. So this is sort of the other angle of where I shoot the videos from, just so you can see what's going on. I've got this big piece of diffusion here with a thousand, uh, with, a, with a Draycast 1000 LED panel right behind it that I crank up and then the, the scrim really helps soften that light. And I'm facing that way with my camera right on this guy. And then I've got the Rode shotgun mic coming over the top. The set's kind of broken down right now because I had to use some of the lights for a shoot that I did for a client. But the other thing I do is I have marks on the floor down here with little green tape. So then if I had to pull everything away, if I have friends over, uh, I know where to put everything right back and I can get it done pretty quickly. On the stand itself, I think you can see this, I've got a tablet holder so I can put my iPad with all my notes for the show and everything I want to talk about, as well as this little um, Israeli arm, I think they call it, some kind of a little arm to hold my small HD focus monitor. Camera sits up here and um, I run that audio through the Zoom H4n. So I'm capturing that and I capture a scratch track on the camera itself. But this is pretty much the setup. And then pretty much right here on this wall, I've got another light, a 500 LED that's actually broken down. The set right now, let me go back to this. My set is, uh, is broken down right now because my set right now is a little bit broken down. I had a client shoot, so I had to strike a couple of these lights and whatnot. But pretty much I've got another light hitting me from my left side and I've got a little bounce to just helping kind of balance some things out. And then right here, you can see this stack of stuff. These are my sound blankets and those go right up here on these clips. So I've got this bar here and I've got that bar going across there if you can see that. So I can black out the room as well as kind of deaden the sound in here a little bit because it, it can get a little boxy and I haven't done too much acoustic treatment more than I need to do. So um, these are down right now because the view out there is gorgeous and it's nice to be able to sit and look at the um, fantastic nature. Sometimes I'm editing away and I look up and there'll be like a family of deer or something going by. It's pretty cool. So that's what I got. Oh, here's a little fun tidbit. The old Marshall refrigerator. What do I have in there? I have some old stuff. Look at that. Telefunken mugs. Um, this thing's great. That always gets people. And I've got some random amps. Not many of these are mine. In fact, most of these amps belong to my brother-in-law, Carl, who's a guitar teacher in New York. That PV right there is my old, my very first electric guitar amp. Let's see it from this angle. Pretty much looks like this, right? I've got the shotgun mic going. I've got a tripod here all set up. And I've got the Draycast um, 1000 LED panel. Sometimes I have a little lamp here going just to blast me with a little extra light. And then I light up this candle. And then over here, I hit this light, which acts as a practical. Um, if you're wondering what's on this wall, all of these are album covers, again, that my late cousin Michael Bloomfield did, albums that he did, Bob Dylan, right? Like a Rolling Stone, right on that record. And um, a couple of randoms, Levon Helm, Electric Dirt, and uh, Rich Robinson poster. Big fan of the Black Crows. Here's my Black Crows poster collection right here. You can check out, uh, except for this one. This is uh, the Paul Butterfield Blues Band right there again something for my cousin so i've got one more special room in this downstairs to show you that uh, i think you're gonna dig so this was already here so this door leads to someplace very special it's the last room i'm going to show you on this tour and um, i think you're going to dig it it is basically a vocal booth that i built out of an existing little pocket that was here under this stairwell and i basically just went in and I took some carpeting stuff that I got from Home Depot, carpeted the walls, and then I put acoustic panels all over the ceiling. 
so that it would be pretty dead. And when you get in here, you can probably hear already, it gets pretty quiet pretty quickly. I've got some other things in here. I've got half, not even half, I've got much, many more CDs, but here are some CDs that I keep in here and some things. Um, and right now, this is one of those Draycast LED panels that I have. This is kind of set up for like a little product shooting area that I started to construct and, and uh, get that going because I've got some product shots. I show Pro Beard Co, one of the sponsors on the show. I don't know if you can see that, but that's one of the tins. I've got to shoot some stuff for them. So that happens right there. And uh, what else we got? Microphones, big old Telefunken mic. You can't see it right there with the light. That's all right. And some mic stands, my air turn. Go stands are right over there. So that's that's the vocal booth. I really dig this room. I'm super psyched by it. All right, so that's it. That is the Roadie Free Radio Studio Tour 2019. I hope you guys dug it. And um, just know that whatever space you have, you can make work for your purposes. Whether you're making a podcast, you need to do video editing, photography, whatever it is. There's ways to make whatever kind of space you have work for you. I've seen people do incredible things with small spaces. So whatever your space is, you can make it work to make this stuff happen to you. You don't need a 500 square foot room and different sides to do YouTube videos and editing and all that kind of stuff. So make it work for you. I would love to hear your comments below. Please leave me one. Let me know what you thought. Let me know of any ideas you have to make things a little more vibey in here. I'm always trying new things. Hit that like button if you liked the video. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Be good, be smart, be good people, and we'll see you in the next video.